Friends, good morning, and welcome to Church of St. Martin in the Fields, to our online worship. We will be worshiping from the Book of Common Prayer, which you can find at home or online, and we invite you to join us. We begin on page 355. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, Open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. 
And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, Hallelujah. A reading from First Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What were you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? The stranger asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us sent to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And the stranger said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. What is it, I wonder, that we don't get the things the first time around? What is it about the human condition that we just can't quite seem to grasp, 
something. Studies show that over and over again, it takes an average of two months for a new habit to be formed. And for learning something new, there are all sorts of numbers. Vocabulary, they say seven times repetition. Something you're not interested in, 17 times. Muscle memory, a hundred times before your muscles remember to do what you are teaching them to do. And sometimes we have this fallacy that knowing is half the battle. But apparently, as I said, it's a fallacy. And I say that because I confess that I have signed up for Yale's happiness class. This is a course you may have read about in the New York Times where a psychology professor set up this class for students. She believed it was important for them to learn about quality of life amidst all the cerebral attention that they were already working on. And when she put this class together, it was over enrolled immediately. I think four to 500 students took the class in the first year. And so she decided to offer this class online to the public free on the platform Coursera. And I believe at this point, a million people have signed up for this course. And I have signed up along with everyone else to learn how to live a life where happiness is a part of it. And the very first class she addresses that knowing is not half the battle. Because no matter how much we know, it doesn't mean that we will act on what we know. Now, one of my favorite books by Frederick Buechner is called The Gospel as Tragedy, Comedy, and Fairy Tale. And I picked it up again this week in light of the readings that we've heard this morning and the challenges we are having of sheltering in place. I think I would call this the meltdown week based on my own experiences and many other people that I have spoken to and prayed with. You could say that these days I'm seeing the gospel as more than tragedy, comedy, and fairy tale, but rather as gospel, the reality show. We are in real time, you and I. And as human beings, we just cannot seem to grasp this message of inclusion and invitation that the gospel repeatedly proclaims to us. For if we had, if we had, we would not keep returning to church because of our woundedness, our brokenness, looking for healing. Each time we fall, each time we suffer what life has placed in our paths, this reality of being human, we return seeking God. And this constant cycle of falling and returning puts us in very good company with Jesus' disciples. For in our Easter readings, the disciples play the role of revealing Jesus to the world. Hence, that is why we are reading the book of Acts, the Acts of the apostles spreading the gospel. And by the time we get to that book, the disciples are all over it. But to get there, we first learn that the scales had to fall from their own eyes. They themselves had to get to a place from which their hearts burned within them. And this burning moment they recognized in hindsight in Luke chapter 24, verse 32. This moment. And when they say, weren't our hearts burning within us? shows how they were finally open to Jesus revealing himself to them. And that is where I wonder for you and I, for we can tell the story of Jesus' resurrection over and over again. In the third person narrative of revelation in scripture, but I am more drawn to wonder how open are we really to revealing Jesus to us in our own lives. And perhaps, as I wonder this, it is to realize that the message, to grasp this message, to fully enter into this call, that Peter this morning says, loving one another deeply from the heart. How do we grasp that message? 
How do we be free to enter into that deep love that God has given us? And I believe it is the only way we can do it, is to fully be ourselves, all of ourselves, to be authentic to God and one another, and to be real. Yes, like the velveteen rabbit, real. And yet, we cannot always do so because hubris, these scales on the eyes, get in our ways. And we put on the face that others want to see, the face that we, we think God wants to see. But first, Peter has a message for us. He says that we were ransomed from the futile ways, wearing a facade, futile, answering the call of the world, futile, living a life of materialism, futile. Christ frees us from the captivity of our own desires to turn and face anything other than God. And Christ is the relationship that brings us back to God. This love of Christ addresses the narrowness of the heart that we develop as we grow older. For how could we possibly love everyone and everything? As a child, I learned a song, and maybe you did too. And it went, love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. But it becomes more when you give it away. And yet, as adults, we lose sight of this as we gallop along in our existence of fitting things into boxes and in timelines and quantifying and qualifying how life is supposed to go. But there are times in our lives in which our hearts truly burn within us. God's love is made known. Truth is made known, and we can feel the fire, and suddenly we know the scales fall from our own eyes, and we've arrived at true understanding. And some of you know my story. When I answered my call to be a priest, those scales fell from my eyes as I sat in the pew watching my friend Lance be ordained. And as I journeyed through my life, I could see God in all those moments that I did not want to see. And when I walked out of that service, I knew my friend Lance looked at me and he knew that something had changed. It was the call of God right there. And this morning, we have that moment of the scales falling from the eyes of the disciples when they come to this true understanding of Jesus' death and resurrection. Deeply love with a human heart, says First Peter, we are being asked to love one another as God loves us and to love God as God loves us. And in this imitation, it means to be fully open with all of who we are, which means being vulnerable. It means being vulnerable to whom we are, not only with God, but with each other. Frederick Buechner says that we come clothed with our own securities and pretensions and reputations. And we are clothed this way not only for survival, but because, he says, we cannot endure too much nakedness any more than we can endure too much silence. We have journeyed through Lent. A Lent, a time of stripping away of that holy silence until at last we stand naked with ourselves and with Christ. And you and I have experienced a Lent that we never expected in this time of COVID-19. We have come to a moment of stripping even more than we expected. And we have come to a moment like the disciples of scales caught falling from our own eyes. And I think that's what this week is about. We have been so close with one another for so long now, our families and our friends, and these scales fall from our eyes and we are so vulnerable with each other, stripped to the bare minimum of food and shelter, family and close friends. And when we are in this place of nakedness, 
with those that we love. There is nowhere to hide. No work outside the home for many of us. No events or parties or dinners and restaurants or other public opportunities to get away from the realities of ourselves and our lives. And we are forced to truly confront who we are in times of need, in times of stress, and in this confrontation, staring in the mirror is where Jesus finds us and holds us and loves us. Loving us and affirming us in all of our nakedness and vulner vulnerability, we are deeply loved. And this is what the resurrection is really about. Jesus answers seeing us in all our nakedness and loves us through the truth that is named in our hubris. And this spring, as we find ourselves in front of this mirror when we least expected it, Beekner says that it is the unlivable that drives us into the eye of the storm. And I believe we are in the eye of the storm with COVID-19. And as we stand in the eye of that storm and look at ourselves in the mirror, all the parts of us that we are proud of and all the parts that we are not, can we grasp the love of Christ to affirm that? And if we can, how can we carry that deep love that is given to us from Christ? In the midst of our own nakedness and vulnerability, how do we carry that forward into the lives of those that we love? For we are, to quote King Lear, poor naked wretches. And it's terrifying to confront ourselves, to admit to those that we love that we are not all that we desire to be, but we can find that strength in the gifts of Christ and Christ's love. God does not give answers, Beekner says, he gives himself. And in giving God's self to us, that is where love is. And the celebration in Christ's resurrection is that Christ is with us in all our vulnerabilities. And knowing that we no longer need to clothe ourselves with pretension and other trappings, and the question still is, how do we then give that to others? And I ask that especially because this feels like a contradiction. We're so close and vulnerable with each other in our homes, and yet when we go on the street, we're wearing masks. Masks that separate us from our neighbors because of COVID-19. And so suddenly we have no barriers between our loved ones and barriers between everyone we see when we go out to businesses and shop. And so here is an invitation. Instead of looking at these masks as a depressing sign of a current health reality, which it is, we can say that's a fact. Rather than retreating inward, let us go outward as an opportunity to be so true of who we are and who God has created us to be and how we are called to love, that this authenticity cannot be obscured by any mask that we wear. And when we pass someone on the street or trail, let that shine forth in our eyes and in our whole being. For this is how we celebrate Christ's resurrection this Easter, this gift for the world. And if we want to walk as children of light and follow Jesus, let us be open to revealing ourselves to him and let him reveal ourselves to us. And may we offer that to all of God's people, especially not only those close in our own lives, but those who walk with us each day on the street from a distance. And let us celebrate in the words of Gerard Manley Hopkins, let him Easter in us be a day spring to the dimness of us, be a crimson cresseted east. Amen. Let us continue with the Nicene Creed.
found on page 358 of your Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the world. We pray for the St. Martin's Flower Guild. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. We pray for the St. James School. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Alleluia, Christ is risen. <clears throat> Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life to the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. We pray for those who are sick, including the following members of the St. Martin's community. Claire Concilio, Kathleen Duffy, Sharika Brown, Larry and Patricia Rhoda, Wayne Cressley, Ken, Lynn and Andrew Fulton, Julie and Tyler Hale, Ann Brewster, Antonio Clavijo, Junior Hernandez, Giuseppe Parra, Doug McDonald, Tom Barrett, Carol Parks, Susie Bell, Jack Allard, Eric Witte, Elizabeth Townsend, Allie Lockwood, Barbara Bridell Searle, Maria Frontera, Margaret Hugh, Danielle and Nate Tinder, Anne Wagner, Christy, the family of Shirley Jones, Darla Wetherill, Sam Lovett, the family of Eric Rivers, Byron Buggage, marine baggage, and those who we name now. Jesus, 
the resurrection and the life. We give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you, including Norm Potnick, El Torrey, Eric River, Dottie Crow, Andy Weinmiller, and those who we name now. Raise us with them to eternal life. And now either silently or in the silence of our own hearts, let us add our own thanksgivings and petitions. Gracious God, we pray for those infected with the coronavirus who need your healing touch and loving arms wrapped around them. Give them strength and stamina to fight through this sickness. Remove the feelings of anxiety and uneasiness. Take away their concern and remind them of your healing presence. May their caregivers, families, and neighbors be shielded from the onslaught of the virus as they offer care to those in need. We pray for the hospital staff, the doctors and nurses who are weary of long hours. Be their rock, give them strength as they strive to find a cure and restore communities to wholeness and health. We pray for all essential workers, including those who deliver goods, warehouse employees, police and fire officers, security guards, food industry employees, and our government leaders. Above all, dear God, help us to rise above fear and trust in you, our creator and maker of all humankind. We ask all this through the intercession of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, risen one, Lord of life, be with us always. Amen. Friends, let us now share a sign of God's peace. May you turn to those whom you are with at home, or if you are alone, perhaps you can text a friend or a loved one and share the sign of God's peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. All shall be well, all shall be well, all shall be well, oh, all shall be well, all shall be well, all shall be well, all shall be well, oh, all shall be well, all shall be well, all shall be well. Oh, 
all shall be well. 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 Our service continues on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer, Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you in him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, 
all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, return all things to your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Mary and Martin and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Dear friends, there is a long-standing tradition in the Church which is affirmed in the Book of Common Prayer that when people are unable to physically receive the bread of life and cup of salvation, the benefits of partaking of the bread and wine can be conveyed by making an act of spiritual communion. Christ, the living bread, is truly present when we open the door of our hearts and invite him to make us his home. Let us, therefore, turn to Jesus who stands at the door knocking and says to each of us, If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and eat with you, and you with me. I invite you to open the inner door of your hearts in silence, and let us pray. Lord Jesus, the living bread come down from heaven, be present in the power of your deathless love and life-giving spirit. Let the grace of your presence, like manna in the wilderness, heal and strengthen and renew us. Amen. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Amen.
As an act of thanksgiving for our spiritual communion, let us say together a prayer known as the Anima Christi, or Soul of Christ. I will say a phrase, and you may repeat it after me. Jesus, may all that is in you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. May the shelter I seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not love from the love you extend. Hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings, shed your light and your love. Until with you, saints, I may praise you forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not always have the time we wish to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.